for so many, the story of the Von Eriks is going to be an unknown story, but whether you are a wrestling fan, or especially if you're not, this is a story that is so deserving of being told and represented on the silver screen. Hi everyone, Nico Lero here from the Silver Screen Dudes, and today I'm going to be going into the Iron Claw. What a great film. Now, right off the bat, one of the big things that I think is going to worry people, which I've alluded to just now, is the fact that, oh, if I'm not a wrestling fan, am I going to enjoy this movie? Absolutely yes. It should be noted, this is not a movie that is catering to wrestling fans. In fact, there's, there's an argument to be made that in terms of it being primarily a focused character study on the real life tragedy of the Von Erich family, there's not that much actual wrestling involved. Like, put it this way, there's way more boxing in the Rocky movie, in the first Rocky movie, than there is wrestling in the Iron Claw. Now, granted, the majority of the third act in Rocky was boxing, you know, his fight against Apollo Creed. You don't really get any huge moments or any lot or prolonged matches of wrestling in this. So if wrestling is something that you've always turned your nose up at, oh ye of little faith, have no worry, because this is first and foremost a drama about a family. A messed up, toxic father pushing his sons way too far and tragedy befalling these sons all in a manner of different ways. Some related to the world of wrestling, some not related to the world of wrestling. I'm going to be vague here on purpose because if you know about the Von Erichs, you know it's not something one should ruin in any way, shape or form. And if you don't know, going into any detail about what happens to each of these characters would simply be to deprive you of the huge emotion that you feel in the movie. Now, Zac Efron is in the lead here, playing Kevin Von Erich, and they're a wrestling family, essentially, And but you don't get any long montages of them working out or of wrestling. You very much get the impression that wrestling is what these guys live and breathe for, but it's about how they cope with the pressure of always trying to be top in the world of wrestling without ever actually alluding to wrestling itself, you feel this insurmountable pressure that's forever at the forefront of these characters. And it's really hard to see because as well as the pressure from the industry that they're trying to be in or are actively in, you get this huge amount of competition between between the brothers so you get this messed up dynamic of them always trying to one up each other but not doing so intentionally to try and fracture their relationship and at the top of all this you've got this you got, you got the dad who's just pushing and pushing he's this bitter old man who was so close to making it as the top guy in wrestling but never quite did and he's trying to almost almost have a second lease of life almost live vicariously through his sons to huge detrimental effect it's it's really hard to watch man now I don't have any siblings personally. I imagine if you have siblings, brothers, or even sisters, this movie is gonna hit you hard. Cause it hit me hard. Just as a father, seeing what this father was putting his kids through broke my heart. But to, to have a sibling, I imagine this movie is gonna absolutely destroy you. What these guys go through, it, it, it's, it's, it's horrible. Um, and yeah, I'm, I knew a lot about the Von Eriks, massive wrestling fan. If you're new to the channel, that's, that's you know, so th this is like perfect world for me. Like I love Zac Efron, I love wrestling, and I love great dramas. And I love A24 as a studio, who are the guys responsible for making this. But it is a hard to watch movie, man. It's, it's, it's quite brilliant. It's really quite brilliant. The it's not without its negatives though there are a few things which i thought were one in particular which i'll touch on in a moment which was rather unforgivable but one was it really took its time now much like a well-crafted western movie something like there will be blood is a very 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 slow movie i'm not saying this is as good as there will be blood but i'm liking the pacing to that you know it's a slow burn it doesn't go hard into melodra melodrama. You don't have these big Hollywood-esque moments of, oh, woe is me. You don't get any of that nonsense. 
the drama and the tragic moments, they're purposefully underplayed and subtle. And that may not work for everyone's liking. Like there were a few moments where some of the tragedies happened where I thought, I don't know if I felt as much as I maybe should have felt in that scene. And I don't know if the answer to that is right or wrong. It's just the vibe the movie was going for. It worked for me for most part in terms of how they delivered the tragedy. But I don't know, there was a little part of me that was left wanting. I was like, you could have gone a little bit harder there. You know, it, it made me sad. It never made me, you know, it never made me cry. And I think that there was enough material here that it could have gone into territory where I was crying. But I want to hear from you. Did, did, did this movie make you guys cry? Let me know. The other thing which I think is unforgivable. This is going into the world of wrestling now. So apologies if you're not major wrestling fans. But Ric Flair, who is for some people the greatest wrestler of all time. He's certainly one of the greatest ever. One of the biggest personalities in wrestling. Whoever they cast to play Ric Flair, wow, that was a misstep. It, it took me out the movie so hard. Now, Ric Flair's in it for all of five, 10 minutes, but the role is so important. And the things that happened between Kevin Von Erich and Ric Flair, you know, historically, were hugely impactful on Kevin's life and where it went after that. So for me, for the context specifically of this story, and for the fact that Ric Flair is a larger than life iconic character, this was too much of a big role to screw up. And for me, this stood out so badly, like a sore thumb, like how could you screw up the role of Ric Flair this badly? It was pantomime it was, it was over the top, which some people may say, well, hang on, Ric Flair, Ric Flair was a very over the top character. Yes, but I was watching someone playing over the top not watching someone embody being over the top. And for that reason, I was just watching this going, Jesus Christ, what have you done? I mean, there are countless people on Instagram Reels, on TikTok, on YouTube and Shorts doing Ric Flair impersonations, which are really good and which were better than this. This felt like someone trying to be Ric Flair and failing miserably at it. On that basis alone, the movie's not getting a perfect score and I'm in instantly deducting it one point because it was so bad, that Ric Flair stuff. That, that, that really was quite unforgivable. However, aside from the Ric Flair stuff and the kind of slow burn, the movie is quite the magnificent accomplishment. It's a typical A24 movie. It's well produced. The performances, top to bottom, notably from Zac, Zac Efron and Lily James, but from everyone, were fantastic. And it really did shed a light, shed a light, sorry, into the world of wrestling that a lot of people, both wrestling and non-wrestling fans, may not even have been aware of. So all in all, what do I think of the Iron Claw now that we've done the rambling? What do I think of the Iron Claw? What will my final score be? I'm going to score Iron Claw 8 out of 10. I think this is going to be making my top 10 of the year and we're only in February. Happy days. But incredible movie, worthy of seeing in the cinema. I don't entirely buy into the whole Zac Efron should have earned an Oscar for this film. He's amazing, but I don't think he was Oscar caliber amazing in it. But what it does do, which makes me so happy, is it shows the whole world what I've been saying for ages. Zac Efron has got chops. He's certified. He is a brilliant actor. Cast him as the next Wolverine is my opinion. Um, but yeah, I really recommend you go and see The Iron Claw while you can and go and support these br another brilliant movie from A24 Studios. And over to you guys, what did you think of The Iron Claw? Let me know, leave your thoughts in your comments down below. Please do be sure to like the video if you haven't done so already. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If movies are your jam, then this is the channel for you. There should be a, a direct link to subscribe up here and uh, hopefully another video down by my side here for you to watch if you wanna see another movie review. But for now, that's it from me. My name's Nico Liro and I will see you guys right here back on the Silver Screen Dudes YouTube channel very soon. Bye for now.